Hello, in this video we're going over an NF table it's an example. It's going to be on a fresh installation of a Debian 10 uh, Linux server without a graphical user interface. It's just going to be command line because it's meant to be a Minecraft server. Uh, that's the end goal and I want to use all the resources for Minecraft instead of uh, GUI. So, first thing that we need to do is log in. That's the username for this. And we've logged in. And let's take a look at. Actually, first we need to fully install NF tables because it doesn't come, even though it's default, for some reason it doesn't come fully installed on Debian 10.3 as of uh, March 2020. I don't know why. Okay, so apt install and f tables. Then yes. After looking over everything, then say yes, of course. So it's installing NF tables fully. Should be soon. Okay, now let's look at the configuration file. There's more than one way to deal with this. Um, I spent a day trying to figure all this stuff out. Uh, you have an interactive NFT, and I just find it easier to configure the to adjust the configuration file. Although the disadvantage of adjusting the configuration file directly is that if you make a mistake, then you have more troubleshooting. It's more difficult to troubleshoot, and it can crash the firewall. So the route to it is it's in the etc directory and then it's just nf tables dot configuration. Now I use nano you could use another text editor if you want. And that's the basic rules that uh, come with this. And it's basically allowing all the traffic so what we want to do is to uh, interrupt or is, is to drop packets or reject them. I prefer dropping on a server. And so let's look at this. I have a functioning like NF tables configuration file that uh, I copied after adjusting it from the uh, after adjusting it on a test uh, installation I uh, got to work and so I know this works um, we're, what we're going to do is to accept the local host traffic accept traffic that originates from the computer itself accept secure shell and minecraft and that's just this destination port and then you put the port numbers that you want and I'm putting notes like that in there because I saw it in an example I thought that's a good idea because I don't really understand this completely and then this is a inet filter if you want to just IP4 then it would be IP and be set up a little bit differently. And uh, but I want to make a demonstration of both IP4 and IP version six, just because, as I understand, a lot of people have both, and I don't want I want this video to be useful to people. So I'll just uh, make a add the both versions in here and keep this if you uh, 
that's a complicated thing there to uh, make sure that you uh, can work both of them at the same time. And then here is dropping the uh, all the other traffic. And this stuff I just uh, is stuff that was in there that I commented out because I didn't see what the purpose was and it worked without it. And also I have to uh, make sure that everything is exactly right, spelled and all that fun stuff. Okay, so chain input, all this is the same up to, let's see, that's the same. And then we'll tab to get to the same place. And the easiest way to do this is to get a functioning NF tables configuration file and then just transfer it with secure shell or SFTP over to the computer. But in this case we're doing it directly into here and I'll do it and I want to uh, explain things a little bit make it easier for people copying this and I don't mind if anybody copies this I copied most of it from something from a wiki okay so we've got all this stuff entered hopefully I spelled everything correctly the other if uh, it it'll tell me if I didn't unfortunately well fortunately because then I'll be able to fix it I'm just giving an example that works because there's there's a lack of work easy working useful examples on F and F tables as of right now when March 2020. It took me a day on the wikis at Debian and NF tables. I still don't understand it. So, anyways, rant over. This is what I do, what works for me. And I'm going to exit this, save it, make sure this, it's spelled right. And that's done. Now is the test. First, we're going to enable it on startup. And uh, another thing, is if you use a secure shell, you can actually copy and paste stuff over. Or if you enable copy and paste in uh, the virtual machine, if you use a virtual machine, then that works too. But I'm just giving a case of, or an example of typing it directly in. So system CTO enable NF tables and then uh, tab to auto complete. So now it's enabled at startup. Now we need to start it. And keep your fingers crossed. So the same goes. It works, I think. So now we'll check the status. System CTL status NF tables dot service. And it looks like it works. Now what if you run into a case where you misspell something or make a typo or make some other error? Well, we'll try that. We'll go back into the fo the file, the contr con I can't say it, configuration file, and let's, let's take out this. Let's see what happens. Okay, so system, it's not going to take effect till you restart it as I understand it. And it's going to give an error because just because it's uh, the format's not right. And there's two options that gives. 
you could do the systems uh, ctl status nf tables dot service or general ctl minus xe let's try general ctl minus xe first so in red it says fail to start nf tables and it shows the line over here but you can see what it is but it's not as helpful as what the other option is so we'll control c and then system ctl status and nf tables autocomplete See, right here, that's not helpful either. Oh yeah, it's it's uh, marking or un undermarking uh, whatever the thing is right after where the error is. It's not, didn't find the error exactly where I took out the hyphen between ND and neighbor, but it uh, recognized at least that's a general area. So you just have to be really um, exact with uh, adjusting the configuration files because it's complicated. At least at first it's complicated. It might be a lot easier if you have uh, a degree in this stuff. Okay, so we'll go back and put the hyphen back in. Let's restart this. And check the status. And there we go. It, it works. And then we could verify from another computer you can see this is the Debian VM is the host name okay, let me get out of root it says uh, at the top Debian new 1x10 Debian VM that's the host name Debian VM for this particular one so we'll find the terminal I'm on a separate Computer, oh yeah, we need to get the IP address, which is not hard to do. It's just log in and type IP address, and it's 115. So we've gone into Secure Shell into Debian VM, and so it works. It, uh, it should be dropping all the packets except for the 22 and port 22 for secure shell and Minecraft. And hopefully this is helpful in getting a basic configuration going on your uh, your device. Um, if you have a desktop and you're not doing secure shell or any of that other stuff or Minecraft, you could leave this entire thing out. But if you need to have ports open, this is the uh, format to use. You could either leave it like that or you could or you could add a web page 80, port 80 or uh, whatever else other ports that you need in this line here and that's it thank you for watching and good luck